Thank you so much for visiting my website. You know what? I'm going to hook you up with some free updates. Now, if that's what's going on on your website, then make sure you listen all the way to the end of this episode because I'm going to share with you some valuable tips and strategies that you can put into action right away to build and grow a thriving email list and how to create an irresistible free offer that people will be lining up to sign up for. Okay, you ready? Let's start the show. Welcome to the Yes to You podcast, where we empower women to manifest their vision of happiness and success with down to earth practical guidance for conscious living, personal growth and entrepreneurship. Our goal is to see you take inspired action by saying yes to your calling. I'm your host and founder of RohiniWellness.com, Dominique D. Wilson. And now let's get into the topic of the hour. Welcome to episode nine of the Yes to You podcast. I am very excited about today's episode because I'll be sharing with you some tips on how to build and grow your tribe. In particular, I'm talking about your email list. If you are an entrepreneur, a blogger, a speaker, a writer, a podcaster, a content creator of any sort, having an email list is an invaluable asset that's going to help you build brand awareness grow your following, and sustain your efforts to make an impact with your message long term. With that said, if you haven't started growing your email list yet, you'll definitely want to listen all the way to the end of this episode because I'm going to walk you through just how to set that up in three steps. Step one, we're going to talk about five reasons why you definitely need an email list. It's not enough just to be on social media. The second step, we'll be talking about how to actually set up your email list. And then finally, the third step, we're going to talk about how to create an irresistible free offer that's going to attract and woo your ideal clients so that they click that sign up button and stick with you and hear what you have to say. Now, before we get started, I want you to know that all of the resources mentioned in this episode will be included in the show notes with links. So be sure to go to yes to you podcast.com when you get a chance to access all of the information that I'm going to cover. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to go back and listen to episodes one through eight of the podcast because there is a ton of information and resources covered there that's going to tie into what we're talking about today. And again, everything will be in one place in the show notes for you so that you can refer back to it at a later time. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to go over to rohiniwellness.com forward slash vision and download my free printable PDF guide, the Create Your Vision Workbook. This is an invaluable resource that's going to help you get crystal clear on what you actually want. I'm a firm believer that everything starts with your vision, including what we're going to be talking about today, building your tribe. If you don't have a clear picture in your mind of what you want, it makes it a little bit more difficult to align your efforts and your decisions with your purpose. So be sure to check out that resource as well. In the meantime, sit tight because we're going to dive right into those three tips on how to build and grow your email list the moment we return from this short break. Body, body, mind, mind, mind. spirit, spirit. This is your weekly wellness tip. This week's wellness tip is on how to maintain your day-to-day health by consuming herbal infusions. An infusion is a strong tea. This is not your typical tea where you'll pour hot water and allow it to steep for 10 to 15 minutes. No, an infusion usually contains a lot more herbs and it's going to macerate or steep anywhere from four to eight to 12 hours. Herbs have literally thousands of constituents or phytochemicals that regulate and balance different processes within the body. There are quite a few different herbs that you can infuse, but today I'm gonna share with you my favorite three. Now here's the really cool thing. All of the herbs I'm about to share with you are also safe if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Of course, before you make any changes to your healthcare regimen, you wanna run it by your licensed healthcare practitioner first, just to see what they say. 
So let's dive into the first herb, which is stinging nettle, also known as Urtica dioica. Stinging nettle is one of my favorite herbs, and it's an overall tonic that's going to help nourish the entire body from head to toe. Now check this out, according to the World Health Organization, iron deficiency affects up to a quarter of the world's population. That's one in every four people. Stinging nettle is an excellent solution for this. It is a blood builder because it's so green and rich in chlorophyll. It's also rich in potassium and manganese. This is going to help you build strong, healthy bones and connective tissue. Stinging nettle is also rich in calcium, potassium, copper, vitamin A, and vitamin K, among other vitamins and minerals. Now, interestingly, stinging nettle is also a diuretic, which means it helps to flush the kidneys. So it's going to help to tone and strengthen and repair the urinary tract. As I said, this is a great overall herb. You can consume it every day. Some people even eat stinging nettle. They cook with it. But we're talking about infusion. So before I tell you how to prepare it, I want to tell you really quickly about my two other favorite herbs. The second is oat straw, also known as Avena sativa. Oat straw is known for its relaxing effect because it's very rich in calcium. So this is going to support your muscular and your nervous system. So if you're dealing with a lot of stress and you're holding a lot of tension in the body, this might be an herb that you want to incorporate into your daily regimen. And the third herb I want to tell you about is red clover, also known as Trifolium pretense. Red clover is a beautiful women's herb. It has been used for centuries to help with hormone regulation. This is very important when it comes to preventative self-care, in particularly the area of breast cancer. Red clover is also a great herb that supports healthy circulation. So there you have it. We've talked about nettle, oat straw, and red clover. I have all three and I switch them up. One day I have nettle, The next day I have oat straw, the third day I have red clover, and then I go back. And sometimes I also like to mix them. I'll mix oat straw and red clover together in one infusion. So now let's talk about how to prepare your infusion. Number one, you're going to want to use distilled water, and here's why. Distilled water does not have any minerals in it, so therefore the water is empty it's hungry. It's going to pull those minerals and constituents and vitamins. All those water soluble phytochemicals chemicals are going to be pulled from the plant material into the solution. And that's what you want when you're making an infusion for yourself. And there are two types of infusion. You can make a hot infusion or a cold infusion. If you want to pull out vitamins, minerals, chlorophyll, I would say cold water is best. And if you're looking for more of an astringent action, as I talked about earlier, flushing out the kidneys and removing those toxins, you want to use hot water to pull out more of the tannin content of the plant material. Now to make your infusion is very simple. Any jar will do. In a quart sized jar, however, you want to add one ounce by weight of the herb and then pour in water and fill it all the way to the top. At that point, you want to cap it with a lid and give the entire jar a big shake. Open it up again, top it off with the water, and put it in a cool, dark place just to sit for the next 4, 8, or 12 hours. So, after you've infused your herbs, strain the mixture out, and this step is very crucial. Make sure that you use a fine sieve or cheesecloth, something that's going to catch all the plant material and let only the liquid go through. Then you want to reach in with your hands and squeeze that plant material, because what happens is, if you're using dry herbs, They're going to soak up all the water and some of those chemicals, the phytochemicals, those nutrients that I was telling you about will get trapped in the leaves of the plant. So even though you've made this great infusion, you want to take your hands and literally squeeze the rest of that mixture and you'll notice the color of the liquid is a lot more cloudy after you squeeze it because that's all those additional nutrients that are being unlocked from the plant and brought into your solution. So there you have it. At this point, you are ready to drink your infusion. You can store the remainder of it in the fridge for up to 24 hours. Now, I know I've given you a lot of information. Be sure to go to yestoupodcast.com and check the show notes because I'm going to put all of this information there, including links to where you can purchase your own organic herbs. So I hope that I've gotten you all excited about creating your own herbal infusions. I wish you peace, prosperity, and excellent health. And with that, let's get back to the show. 
Welcome back to the show. As I mentioned earlier, today we're going to be talking about how to build and grow your email list. That's right, email marketing. Now, before I get going here, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you're liking what I'm putting down, please let me know about it. And also let me know if there are topics that you would like to hear me cover on the podcast, because my goal here is to help you move forward towards your goals to achieve your dreams, to manifest your vision. So you can do that in a couple ways. Number one, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. That could be Spotify, iTunes, whatever works for you. Also, you can share an episode on social media using hashtag yes to you and let me know, let your friends know what you liked about the episode. And the third way to do that is to email me at feedback at yes to you podcast.com. Okay, now let's get into the topic. You ready? All right, so first of all, I wanna share with you five reasons why you need an email list if you are an entrepreneur or a content creator of any sort. The number one reason you need an email list is because it increases your direct reach. You're able to reach your ideal client directly rather than having an algorithm working against you. If you're familiar with Facebook, for instance, then you know that if you post something on Facebook and you do not put any money behind it to boost that post or pay for some kind of ad, it's a little more difficult to get people to see your content. And there are some ways around that. There are some caveats, but there is an algorithm. And so you don't always have control over who gets to see your stuff. But if you have an email list, you're interacting directly one-on-one with your ideal clients. So there's no algorithm working against you, keeping your ideal clients and fans and followers from seeing your content. The second reason why you need an email list is because your ideal clients, your followers, your fans' interactions with you are much more intentional. They're interested in what you have to say. They're receptive to the information because they've put their name and their email address in knowing that they're going to receive more information or something from you. And of course, that's going to be a lot more valuable than just getting another like or a thumbs up or some more hearts. The third reason you need an email list is because email marketing is precise. It allows you to target a very specific need or interest rather than just putting out random information and hoping that something lands with someone. When you're trying to build your brand and build relationships and build trust with people, precision is very important. You want to make sure you're speaking exactly to what people need and what people are looking for. The fourth reason why you need an email list is so that you can own your contact list. You can have 13,000 followers, let's say, on Instagram, but what happens if that platform shuts down? How can people connect with you if you don't have their contact information and you're not able to reach out to them? An email list is very important because no matter what happens, once you have those contacts, you have them forever, unless you, for some reason, just delete all of your contacts, right? You can change platforms, you can change websites, you will always have that list of contacts so that you can maintain your relationship with the people who want to connect with you. Out of the four reasons, This one is a whopper. Can you imagine building an entire tribe on Facebook? Facebook evaporates and now your entire tribe has evaporated with that platform. You never want that to happen. So having an email list is home base for all of your contacts. And the fifth reason why you need an email list is to build that know, like, and trust factor. When someone visits your website or sees a social media post for the first time, They don't know you. They may be very interested in what you have to say, but they may not necessarily be ready to take their wallet out and invest in your services. They want to get to know you. They need to hear a little bit more about what you say. So having an email list gives you a chance to take some time and let them get to know you. Let them get a feel for what you offer, what your style is, what your energy is like. Of course, there are several other ways to build a relationship with your tribe, but having that email list is going to be your fundamental foundational way to get that process started. So those are my five reasons why you definitely need an email list. So just to recap really quickly, having an email list is direct, intentional, 
It's precise, you own those contacts, and it builds your know, like, and trust factor with your ideal clients. Now, let's talk about what you need to set up your email list. In order to get started growing your email list, you'll need to offer something in exchange for the name and email address of the people whom you're trying to attract. In order for that to be possible, you'll need some sort of sign up form, right? Where the person you're trying to attract can put in their name and their email address in exchange for some sort of offer that you're presenting them with. And of course, for that to be possible, you need to have a platform to host that sign up form. So that's where your website or your blog comes in, or at least make sure that you have a landing page. Now, if you listened to the last episode, I talked a little bit about why I do not recommend having a free website. And I also have a full blog post that covers five reasons why I don't recommend free websites. But if you're just getting started and that's what you have available, no problem. You can have a WordPress blog. There are so many different platforms to set up your own blog. As an alternative, if you don't have a website yet, you can also use a landing page. There are many services out there that will host a landing page for you to place your sign-up form so that you can start building your email list. One of them is lead pages. I will link them in the show notes as well. So that's the first thing that you need to get started, some sort of platform, landing page, website, or blog. The second thing you're going to need is an email marketing service, also known as an autoresponder. Having an email marketing service is going to allow you to send bulk emails to multiple people and manage all of your contacts in one place. This is not something that's going to be sustainable if you're using, let's say, your free Gmail account. Because how are you going to email 500 people at the same time? There are several email marketing services out there. Some free, some paid, some a mix of both. I am a big fan of MailChimp. I've been using MailChimp for years. It is very user-friendly. It serves all my needs. And I've never had an issue with it. Of course, the best option is to go to each website, see what they have to offer and how well it resonates with you and what your particular needs are. So you've got your platform set up. You've got your email marketing service. The third thing that you need, which I briefly mentioned a moment ago, is an opt-in form that converts. And by converts, I mean an opt-in form that makes people want to sign up and join your list. Now, how many times have you been to a website that looks fantastic and then you see a little box that says, sign up for our newsletter or sign up for our latest updates? Not very appealing, right? Like who wants to put in their name and email address for more updates when we are all receiving hundreds and thousands of emails per day, right? So you want to make sure that your opt-in form is actually appealing, that it converts, that it gets people excited to give you their information so that they can hear more from you. So now we're going to move into part three of this discussion, which is how to create an opt-in form that converts. In particular, how to create an irresistible free offer that attracts your tribe. I'm going to share with you three different ideas for a free offer that you can create. Now, when you're creating an offer for your ideal client, it's very important that you know who that ideal client is, right? You don't want to get so excited about creating something cool that's colorful and that looks amazing, but that nobody wants. So before you create any type of offer, which is called an opt-in offer or a lead magnet, right? Because it magnetizes leads for your business you have to get really clear on who you're talking to because this is going to determine what you'll actually create. In episode five, I talked a little bit about how to identify your ideal client. So if you haven't listened to that episode already, I highly recommend you go back and listen to that episode. That was the episode which I talked about five steps to launch and promote your business. So in the second step, I went over how to identify who that person is. I also talked a little bit about that in episode six when I went over blogging. And I think I even mentioned it in episode seven when I talked about public speaking. It's always going to be the same thing. Whenever you are interacting with the public and creating content, you want to make sure that you are intentional about who you're talking to so that your message lands. 
we all know that everyone is bombarded with a lot of emails per day. So if you expect someone to give you their email address so that they can get more email, then your offer needs to be something that addresses either a want that they have, something that they really want, or a problem they have, some kind of solution. So when you're thinking about your ideal client, I want you to think about what is keeping them up at night? What is that burning question in their mind or that problem that just drives them up the wall that you have some quick digestible solution for so that when they see your opt-in form, they see the answer to that question they have or a solution to that problem that's been paining them for so long. So think about who you're talking to, what is their number one problem, their biggest problem, or the biggest question that they have, if you can provide a solution or an answer to that, that opt-in offer is going to be gold. And of course, before you put your offer out there, you wanna just test it real quick by asking yourself, what is one concrete result that I'm going to be able to get for the person who signs up for this offer? Why should they give me their information in exchange for this? And if you can answer that, then you're all set. So now I'd like to share with you three ideas for an irresistible free offer that you can create in anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes, just depending on how much detail you want to put into it and how tech savvy you are. The first type of offer that you can create is a simple one page PDF download. This would be a checklist or some sort of template. For instance, your cheat sheet or template might be the secret to a sales call that converts. How helpful would that be, right? Depending on who your ideal client is. Now, the next type of offer works great if you have a tangible product that you are selling. If you are creating handmade creations, jewelry, body care, if you make clothing, anything tangible that you'll be shipping out to someone you may want to offer a discount off the very first order, maybe 10% or 15% off your first order. This is a great sign-on bonus for anyone to opt into your, this is a very easy way to get people to sign up for your email list because they're interested in your products already and hey, who doesn't wanna save 10, 15, maybe even 20% off of their very first order? Now, I'm not a big fan of discounting across the board, but if you're doing it just the first time to get people on your list, I think it's a great way to start building that list of subscribers. And again, this depends on what your brand is. So if you're not selling something tangible, this may or may not be the best option for you. Now, the third type of offer is a mini course or challenge. These are a lot of fun People really enjoy signing up for them. They boost engagement with your brand and they deliver a high level of value over a short time. Now, when you're doing a mini course, you don't wanna overwhelm people with information. So maybe a three or five day course is all you need to get started. This is very simple. You might set up three separate videos if it's a three day course. The first video goes out on day one, second video goes out on day two, third video goes out on day three. And you can do the same thing with a challenge. Now, it doesn't have to be video content. Of course, video is very effective nowadays in making that emotional connection with people. But you might have a PDF download along with an email you send that goes out each day for three to five days. Or you may just type what you want to say in the body of the email. However you want to structure this mini course or this challenge, it's up to you. You can have a lot of fun with this. In fact, I did this about a year and a half ago. I created a five-day blogging challenge to help people launch and promote their blog in five days. And just like I'm telling you today, all I did was set up my website. From there, I set up my email marketing service through MailChimp. I created an opt-in form in MailChimp. I used Canva, which is an online free graphic design software. It's super easy to use and a lot of fun. I'll also link that in the show notes. So I used Canva to create my PDF worksheets. Each day of the five-day challenge, I had a worksheet and an accompanying 15-minute video that went out to those who signed up on my email list. Several women signed up for the challenge. They joined my Facebook group, and it was a really nice learning experience for me and for them as well. And we got to talk in the group about some of the things that we were covering and what they were learning. So it turned out to be a really great experience. And as I said, people love challenges, a challenge, mini course, 
potato, potato, kind of the same thing. Play around with that a little bit, depending on, as I said, who you're creating this offer for, what their number one problem, their biggest need or their biggest question is in the moment. And then play around with these three formats that I've shared with you to create an irresistible free offer for your ideal client. So that concludes part three of this discussion. And I'm gonna give you a bonus tip because this would be the next step. The next step is to post this free offer everywhere. Share it on your social media account. Post a link to it on your website. Make sure it's visible where people can see it. Also, be sure to notify your current network of what you have going on. You never know who might find the information useful. This is how you're going to build that foundation to nourish and maintain those relationships with your ideal clients so that you can increase the degree to which they know, like, and trust you. And as you move forward, some of those people will come to a point where they are ready and excited about investing in your programs, products, and services. In summary, we've talked about five reasons you need an email list for your personal brand. We've talked about what you need to set up your email list. We also talked about how to create an irresistible free offer that's going to attract your ideal clients, get them to sign up so that you can start building that relationship. And as a bonus, we talked about what to do next, which is put yourself out there and share that offer with as many people and make it as visible as possible. If this information resonated with you today, then I have another free resource available entitled 10 Fabulous Freebies. Now we went over three different ideas for a free offer that you can create, but I'm gonna provide seven more in this free PDF download. It's actually a two page download In the second page has detailed instructions on how to actually set up your autoresponder. So this is a fantastic resource to have if you're just getting started. And here's how you can get it. Go to rohiniwellness.com forward slash group and send a request to join the Conscious Women Who Lead Facebook group. Once you answer the questions and your membership is approved, I will give you that PDF download completely free. Hopefully with the information that's been provided on this episode today, you have what you need to get started. Of course, there is a world of information out there on email marketing. And if you'd like help getting to the next step, I do offer private business mentorship. And if you want to learn more about that, you can visit rohiniwellness.com forward slash services. Now today we've been talking a lot about your tribe and on that note, I want to give you a quick sneak peek of what we'll be talking about next week on episode 10 and that is the importance of community. Somehow in modern day society, we have glamorized this idea of the hero's journey, the one person, the underdog that makes it and succeeds and that narrative is played out. We need each other. We should be partnering in one another's success, championing one another, not competing. You can get so much more accomplished when you have more than one brilliant mind coming together excited about a greater cause. So we are going to be talking about the importance of getting that support, of building community, of having accountability, the importance of sisterhood, which is something that I think is very undervalued in our busy, independent society. And while there is a special place for independence, interdependence is where the real gold is at. So ladies, make sure that you tune in next week at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time because we are going to be talking about the beauty of empowerment through sisterhood. getting chills already. (laughs) In the meantime, remember, you get to choose how you show up in life. Love yourself fiercely, own your story, and say yes to your calling. It was a pleasure to have you join us for this episode of the Yes to You podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to visit rohiniwellness.com forward slash vision to download my free PDF starter guide, the Create Your Vision Workbook. If this episode was helpful for you, please leave us a review on iTunes. 
Also, when you share this episode on social media using hashtag yes to you, we'll give you a shout out on a future episode. We look forward to inspiring you next time right here on the Yes to You podcast.